Hey, it's Kat again. Okay, today we're looking at objects. Java is an object-oriented language and so we need to know a little bit about what objects are and how we might use them. Objects in Java are a teeny bit like the primitive data types that we've already looked at, but they're more complex. They contain more than one piece of information and they can also have methods associated with them that allow us to manipulate them in a variety of different ways. We're going to start with some basic objects, so I'm going to start with something called color. Remembering Java is American, it uses American spelling. So I might create a color called sky blue. Just as we had with the primitive data types, by saying a type and giving it a name, this is a declaration. Also similar to the data types, by saying color sky blue, I've created some space in memory and I've given that one a label. So it basically refers to a little box and it said this contains sky blue, but we don't yet know what sky blue is. Now, unlike a primitive data type, I can't just say sky blue equals something or other. I actually need to instantiate and initialize it, which is much more complex than a simple assignment. So here I would actually say sky blue equals new color. And in there I would have to give the color values of my color sky blue. So the red, the green and the blue. So this particular color has 119 as it's red, 201 as it's green, 255 as it's blue. That means that now my box contains red, 119, green, 201 and blue 255 so it already has more than one piece of information in it which is that extra added level of complexity over a basic primitive data type this line here where I actually created the color as I said that is instantiation and initialization Now as we've looked at a few Java programs, we've always had this method called init. Init is specifically used for initializing objects as well as some other bits and pieces. So this line here is a declaration and it lives inside the class at the top of the code so that I can use that color anywhere in my program. But this line here must happen in public void init for it to work effectively. Another quick example of an object that we could create, uh, since we're dealing with some basic objects to start with, is we could also create our own fonts. Now as we've noticed, we've used a drawstring a few times in our applets and it's always created or used the same font type, size and color. What we can do here is we can actually create our own fonts. The color is set through the program as we found when we were drawing things. Uh, but we can create a new font that will specify the type, whether or not it's italicized or bold or plain, and the actual size. So let's create a font. We'll call it, I'm going to call it lazy font. And then I might say lazy font equals new font. I'm going to run out of room here, so this would all go on one line, but in the bracket I would then put the font style. So I might say sans serif. I would then also say whether it is going to be plain or italic or whatever. So I, in this case I'm going to use font dot italic. Now once I put in the dot the program will actually offer me some suggestions and I can select italic from that list and I'm going to make this font 20 
pixels big. In terms of actually using the fonts and colors created, it's easier to show that in Eclipse, and I'll show you that in a moment. But what I want to point out very quickly now is that I declared I was going to use, I was going to create a font, and I gave it a name. Then in my initialization, I used equals new font. This must be exactly the same as this. So if I have font, I must say equals new font. Then we have the open brackets. This is calling what's called the constructor method of the object type font. So equals new font allows you to actually create that object and it has a specified set of rules. So it will accept certain pieces of information. So the color accepted a red, a green, and a blue component. A font accepted a font type, the uh, italicized or plain or whatever, and a font size. So the constructor method of each different object will ask you for different bits of information. As you go through and program using different object types, you can look up the sets of rules on the internet to figure out what you can and can't use and make things work. But for the moment, let's have a look on the computer how we can actually create these colors and fonts and how to apply them to a drawing. All right, so now we're on the computer. What I've done is I've created a project called Java Basic Objects. Inside there, I've created a class called Font, font Color Objects because we've looked at fonts and we've looked at colors. So I've set up my basic screen here as I would with any other project and now is where we're actually going to do use some of the information that we've just learned. So to start off with we could declare our color sky blue. Now I just want to show you quickly what's going to happen if I put my instantiation and initialization in the wrong place. So that line I had to say sky blue equals new color. So remembering that new color is the bit that says I know what a color is, I know what information I need to be able to actually do that. So in there I specify what my color was, it was 119, 201 and 255, so that's my version of sky blue and I put my semicolon there. Just check that that one's a semicolon, it is. Now I'm getting errors, okay? Now I can see that there's a little red spot here there's a red squiggly line here and then there's a red cross there. So it's telling me I've got a syntax error token, sorry, a syntax error on token semicolon and that it was expected. Now I know that semicolon belongs there so it's not really much of an error. Let's just run that as well. Now we know there's problems saying errors exist, proceed. And here, let's move that down there for you. Here it says start applet not initialized. These are the kinds of errors when you put your initialization in the wrong place. So let's just select that, move it down here. All our errors are gone. Let's run that again. And this time the message at the bottom of our applet says applet started. That means that so far, our applet doesn't contain any errors. Okay, it's just important that you're aware that the error we just had, what it will look like, and what is caused, what the cause of that error is. Okay, so we've created our color sky blue. Now, if I just draw a rectangle on the screen, by default, sorry, I'm not using a, not drawing a string, I'm drawing a rectangle. By default, that rectangle would be black. So let's just have a look, quick look, 2020, and I might just make it a square, semicolon, and I'll run that. And lo and behold, we get a black square. What we do then if we want to use our sky blue is we use g.setColor. And in here, what we could do, if we wanted to use one of the Java colors, we would say color dot and then we could access one of the Java colors. If we're using a color that we've created, we simply put the color name in those brackets. 
So let's just draw another shape. We'll draw another rectangle, but this one I'm going to have filled in just so you can see my beautiful color blue. Um, I'm going to draw it next to the other one. So if I was being a bit silly, I'm sure I could make a nice little pattern of black and blue squares. So there we've got a filled in rectangle using the blue that I created. So that's all whiz bang fantastic. Let's try creating a font. So same thing, our declarations are always in the class at the top. If they're not in the class at the top, it means that often other methods like init and paint won't be able to access them. So we always put them in the class. So let's create font, lazy font. And in our instantiation and initialization, remember that initialize in init. It's a good way to remember it. Lazy font equals new font. Again, saying new and the object type is calling the constructor of that object. We've got an error there because we haven't finished our line yet. And I'm going to use a sans serif font. And I'm going to make it italic. So I put font dot and then I can choose italic. And I'm going to make it size 20 and a semicolon to end that line. All my errors are now gone. So just to quickly demonstrate again, if I draw some text, it's going to be the default font style and size. So we'll say, hello, and I will put that just a bit down from my boxes, but in line with the first box horizontally. Now I will note as well that up here, the default color was black. I then changed it to blue. I have not changed it back to black or to any other color. So my text, hello, will still be blue. Okay, so there we've got my little message. And let's try now changing the font. So similarly to where we set the color, we can also set the font. So g.setfont. And here we will use lazy font. And let's draw another string and say, I'm a lazy font. I'll just pop that one underneath the previous one. Now because it's a bigger font, I might want to move it quite a ways down the screen. So I might put it at 120. I might still get some overlap, who knows. Okay, and now we're saying I'm a lazy font. So the default font and my lazy font. If you want to know more about which fonts you can use in your Java, just open up your browser, go to Google and search for something like Java fonts list. Some results I got here were to indicate the different styles, so a serif, sans serif, monospaced. Uh, another site here gave a list of, of some of the fonts that my particular computer could use. Now if, for example, I wanted to use Helvetica, just go back to Eclipse. Let's just create a new font. We'll call it Helvetica. And how I would use that one, so Helvetica equals new font. So remembering always the name equals new, the object type. Here I could put Helvetica in the quotes. And let's go with a plain version of that. It's easier to see in this case. 14, semicolon. Now just quickly, I'm going to be a little bit lazy. Instead of using the lazy font here, I'm just going to replace that with Helvetica. So I'm setting it to Helvetica and not lazy font. Just run that one. And there 
it's used Helvetica in a plain non-italicized font. Now if I'm not sure that this is actually doing what I think it's doing, that it hasn't found the right font, I might just go in and you would actually create another font, but I'm being a little bit lazy here. I'm just going to change that one to Times New Roman. And we'll see if it found the Times New Roman, and it has. So if you know the name of the font, you can try popping it in there, and it may work. Not all fonts are supported, so it might be worth trying, or it might be worth Googling which ones are acceptable. If you are creating something that you are going to publish on the web, then I would suggest that you Google it rather than just use trial and error because you want to stick with web safe fonts and similarly with colors you want to stick with web safe colors not all colors and fonts are universal across the web make sure you do your research before you do the work normally I'd give you a real life example of where you might use this but in this case I'd love you just to have a bit of a play and if you do want an exercise to talk you through the activity uh, just go to my blog and have a look at Prac 2 Objects. It'll give you a few exercises to do with the colors and the fonts.